Hi everyone, my name is Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and today we're going to look at step three in this sum reduction series we're doing in uh, CUDA Crash Course. So in the previous couple of videos, we've looked at you know our initial implementation of uh, a sum reduction algorithm. So we take some big long vector of a bunch of integers, and we want to sum up all of we want to kind of compact it and sum up all of the individual elements, and we want to a single result that represents the sum of that entire vector. So uh, we did that kind of naively at first. We saw that warp divergence was a little bit of a problem. And uh, we also saw that the modulo operator is actually uh, is pretty bad for performance. And we saw that we could rewrite it pretty simply to kind of tackle this warp divergence issue, as well as also tackle this problem with using a modulo operator. And so instead, we just went uh, use sequential threads. So just as a reminder, let's go ahead and go through. So this was our original implementation. So we use that modulo operator to get uh, the threads that directly aligned with the uh, elements that we were going to access. So if we wanted to access array element two, we'd use thread two. Uh, and then same thing here. If we wanted to access element eight, we'd use thread eight. So we have all these threads in the middle here that aren't doing anything. So, you know, threads one, two, three right here are just, you know, they're idle, more or less. So uh, later on, we'll talk about uh, this thing called an active mask, which basically says which threads are active at what time. And uh, so that active mask here, it'll have a one if the thread is active and a zero if it's non-active uh, at, you know, every step of the instructions. And so here we see that we're going to get a lot of, a lot of idle threads. And so we kind of solved this and we got rid of that by instead using sequential threads. So we did just some basic uh, modification to that inner loop uh, and how we looped inside of that uh, and, and how we actually uh, index things inside of that loop in order to instead use sequential threads for all of these. So we're always going to be using threads 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, until you know the end of a warp, which would be 32. Uh, so in this case, 0 to 31. Now, you know, we're not going to have all the threads, of course, active, especially at these later stages, because you know we run out of work to do. We have all these partial sums already, but you know that's something that we'll look at in a little bit. But one thing that uh, I did mention last time that I said was a problem still with this implementation, even though we solved the modulo operator kind of being slow by getting rid of it, and also warp divergence, and uh, using this new indexing to mitigate that, I said that we had shared memory bank conflicts. Uh, and so we'll look at what that actually means in just a second. So basically, we're going to do another modification here. And we're going to actually compact all of these things together, all the threads are going to be, you know, side by side accessing contiguous uh, or sequential and contiguous parts of memory. So thread zero, We'll be accessing uh, uh, index zero, thread one, index one, and instead of you know doing all this kind of skipping about, it will simply access based upon that constant stride. Now it's just going to start out larger and then get smaller as we go down to each of the steps. So we'll start uh, in this example. It'll be a stride of eight right here. So from uh, index 0 all the way over to index 8. We sum those two things together. But notice, all of these things are accessing contiguous chunks of memory. So if we want to add these two things together, we would first have to load this entire chunk of sequential 8 uh, integers. And we'd also have to load this uh, sequential chunk of 8 integers. Uh, and generally, when we do things that are sequential, the hardware likes that. The hardware is designed to do things that are very regular like this. Uh, so this is what we mean by shared memory bank conflicts. So if we had accesses like we did before, there's a high likelihood um, and pretty much a guarantee that we're going to get bank conflicts. Now, what are bank conflicts? So the way that shared memory works, uh, and a lot of memory in general, but we're going to specifically talk about shared memory right now, is that when we want to get a word or some, uh, we want to get a word or multiple words out of our sh uh, the shared memory that we have allocated, we have to go through a bank. 
Now, if we if all the threads access different banks, they can all access, access it at the same time. There's also some special cases where uh, if they all access a single bank, we can do, uh, and they're all accessing the exact same piece of data, we can do something called a broadcast. So there's a couple things like that that we can play. But let's say that we take uh, the case uh, right here where these things, uh, well, let's go back here, where all of these uh, threads are accessing different parts of memory. So we have no shared addresses. Now, if we end up with a scenario like this, and they're all accessing different parts of memory, and you know, basically these things are strided. So you know, everything that uh, will have uh, sequentially all of the, you can think of this as the big modulo operator. So right here will be all the addresses that are modulo 32, right? And so anything that's modulo 32 as an address will go to bank zero. But, you know, if we start overlapping, so let's say we start at, you know, zero and we go all the way up uh, to 31, we see that, you know, if they do access things that are on, you know, an individual different bank like that, we have no problem. However, if we have this stride that maybe overlaps some of the threads where maybe, you know, let's say uh, 0, 30, uh, we access an address that's uh, say 32, 0, 32, and then 64, all of those modulo 32 are 0. So all those threads accessing different parts of memory would be lined up on say bank 0. Now in this case it has some other examples, but the, what this ends up uh, doing is that if you have different threads accessing the same bank but different data they'll be serialized and that means that instead of you know all of these accesses accesses happening at the same time it takes three times as long because we have to wait for these accesses to come back then we have to wait for these accesses uh, part two that are still pending and then maybe even a third time uh, and this could go on actually quite a few times, especially if maybe every single thread is accessing the same bank uh, and different pieces of data, then we can't do any kind of broadcast mechanism there. So that's what we're going to tackle in our example today. So we'll go ahead and look at the code we had last time, and that's this sum reduction bank conflicts. Now, in this example, all we did was we set a, uh, a stride that increased every single uh, iteration and we just made sure that we used uh, sequential threads so we always started at zero and went through however many threads until we ran off the block so we checked to make sure that our thread uh, our index that we calculate here was less than the block dimension and then if it was we'd use this index to both uh, uh, of both the element in shared memory that we're going to add and then where that result, that partial sum is going to be stored. Now, let's go ahead and exit out of this and see how we can change this. So instead of having all these threads start uh, expanding out, let's make sure that they're all compacted together and accessing that sequential, uh, they're all accessing sequential uh, pieces of memory and they're not going to run into bank conflicts. So let's exit out of this project. Uh, close solution, and then we'll open up some reduction, no conflicts, and we'll open up the code. So as always, the main function is exactly the same. We don't need to change anything here. Again, we're just looking at the kernel. So the way we can do this is instead of, you know, having a stride that, you know, counts up, we can start at a large stride and gradually work our way down. So in this case, we'll start at the block dimension divided by two. So in our case, we have a block dimension of 256. So we're going to start at a stride of 128. So thread uh, zero will do the partial sum in the first iteration of index zero and index zero plus 128. Thread one will do one plus 129 going all the way up to thread uh, uh, 127, which will add the last element or uh, 255. 
So remember, it's 0 to 255, that's uh, the 256 total locations. So the last, uh, the, this block dim over 2, you know, that accounts for the fact that, you know, so our thread ID here, we, we have to make sure that we stay on the block still. So we need to make sure that our thread ID X is going to be less than uh, this block dim divided by two. Because remember, uh, when we're indexing here, it's going to be the thread ID X plus S. So if it's greater than uh, block dim divided by two, uh, what's gonna end up happening is that we're going to access something that's non-allocated. So let's take the, the trivial case. So if it is, um, if it's exactly blocked in divided by two, so if it's exactly going to be 128, if we added 128 to 128, we'd get 256, and that's not something allocated in this array. Remember, we've allocated spaces zero through 255. So we have to make sure we stick to the lower half of the block. And then uh, that's actually going to be it. So for each thread, it's going to assign to its location, the partial sum, and then it will add the location of the stride. So let's go back and look at that example one more time. So if we go back here, here uh, we have simple uh, 16 uh, entry vectors. So here our block dim is going to be 16. So our block dim divided by two is going to be eight. So this guy right here, thread zero, will access zero and zero plus eight right here. One will access one plus eight, nine, and so on. And then down here, what we'll end up doing is we'll divide this by two, right? So all of these uh, entries have been summed so far. So the upper half of the vector at this point, those partial sums are already done. Now we need to start accumulating all the ones we generated right here. And so those will be right here. So it'll add these partial sums to the four partial sums right here. Calculate, or in this case, by threads four, five, six, seven, until we get to a final output uh, sum right here from a single thread. Okay, so let's go ahead and build this. And let's go ahead and make sure that we've uh, commented out our uh, the scan and this print. And let's actually open up uh, the other solution first. So let's open up uh, the bank conflicts version. We'll do a performance comparison test. So we'll get rid of these this print first and the scan. That way we don't have to press enter. Okay, and we'll rebuild. And then after it's rebuilt, we'll go ahead and start Insight, our performance analysis tool. There we go. We'll profile launch. Okay, and we get a launch. Okay, so just as kind of a frame of reference uh, for our method with, uh, with bank conflicts, but we get rid of that modulo operator we get about 18 milliseconds versus with the modulo operator, it was more like 30 milliseconds. So our big reduction, not our single thread block one, but our one with 256 thread blocks, uh, it takes 18 milliseconds. So let's see if we get any improvement if we get rid of these shared memory bank conflicts. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to the start page. Uh, we'll open up no conflicts. We won't save our profiling. And then we'll go ahead, it's already built, so we can just call Insight, Profile, Launch, and let's see what happens. So we actually did a lot better here. So we actually got all the way down to 14 milliseconds. So we cut down another you know, two to three milliseconds from our execution, which it may sound that you know, compared to going all the way from, you know, 30 milliseconds to 18 milliseconds, that may seem uh, like a really big amount, uh, which of course it is. It's about a 2x improvement or a little less than 2x. Keep in mind that this is now, uh, if you you know take the difference of these two things, so it's about a two, milli a two millisecond difference, that two milliseconds is about another 12 to 15% uh, uh, performance increase 
just by changing the way that we looped over our um, over, over our vector. And instead of having the threads kind of spread out, we clump them together to avoid shared memory bank conflicts. So as we scale this up, we'll get even better performance out of this. Once we, once we start really working with you know large pieces of shared memory and really banging on shared memory a lot, this, these kinds of things really add up. So that's going to do it for today. As always, if we go to the GitHub page at github.com slash coffee before arch, we have, uh, so here's the uh, CUDA programming. So let's go to the main page. So we have all the courses here. There's CUDA programming. And uh, we don't have the code up here for uh, uh, some reduction, no conflict yet, but we can actually just push that right now. So we'll get rid of these reports. We'll go ahead and go to Team Explorer, Changes. And so we can just say add some reduction example without bank conflicts. And we can go ahead and push this to a repository. Uh-oh, we have to pull first, don't we? There we go. Okay. So that's going to go ahead and update us. So here is our sum reduction, no conflicts. Here's the code that we worked on today. So feel free to download this, play around with it, go through the other examples of sum reduction and see the optimization steps that we took in order to you know, gradually increase performance. And uh, yeah, feel free to contact me if you have any specific requests on content that you'd like. And as always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.